Next, why don't we move on to Frankenstein, which also came out in 1931. Frankenstein is obviously like super iconic. I got him right there watching over us while we uh, record. Um, yeah, I mean, he he's going to be a favorite for, for a lot of people, I feel like. And Frankenstein, I had seen a couple times, probably, I would say probably two, two or three times before watching this. And is to me one of the most likable out of the monsters and you know you sympathize for him and you know you kind of feel bad for him a little bit and we can get more into that on his like personality traits more when we talk about bride of frankenstein but he's just some he's one of the few monsters that i can actually root for and feel bad for at the end of the movie oh i agree 100 percent um would you say that he is more or less sympathetic than the wolfman though yeah, and I have a very specific reason about the Wolfman. Uh, I don't, I don't want to spoil it now because we're not on that topic. Okay. But remind me because I have a very specific reason on why I would rather root for Frankenstein than the Wolfman. Oh, interesting. Even um, though I really like the Wolfman. Okay, um, I'm on Team Wolfman for that one. I, I do enjoy Frankenstein a lot. I think it's a, a spectacular uh, film, especially for its time. As I mentioned in the, when we were talking about Dracula, that the, the technical precision of the movie um, made the same year, um, but different director, James Whale, um, who was much more adept at filmmaking than, than Todd Browning was. And you can see, um, you know, when you watch it, that just, just the types of shots, um, the way the camera moves, um, you know, everything about it is just a little bit more um, one, you know, one step above, one step above and beyond. It doesn't, doesn't go for the very obvious. It goes for how can we make this take this to the next level? Um, and in some of it's just very minimalistic too, which is really evocative. Um, even because I was just watching this again this weekend on the 4K release, and um, the opening scene where they're digging up the corpse of the of the guy that they just buried. I mean, that's like minimal set. There's like literally nothing there. That's just a, a matte background of a you know dark sky. There's some crosses and tomb, tombstones and markers that are kind of just scattered around and they're just digging the hole, uh, you know, trying to dig up that corpse. And it's just um, Dr. Frankenstein and Fritz, who is his uh, assistant, not Igor, uh, Fritz. You know, you know what I didn't realize until I was watching another movie reviewer's review of Frankenstein and they pointed it out and I was like, really? I got to rewatch this and see if that's actually true. There wasn't a score they rely on like just sounds and like the lightning and stuff like that. Like throughout the movie, there's no buildup of like, there's no background noise of the monster about to come and come out of the shadows and like stuff like that. I don't know if you've ever picked up on that. Well, in Dracula, yes, a hundred percent. There's no score in Frankenstein. I'm trying to think, is there a score? Um, there might not be. It's not uncommon for, for movies of this age to not have, well, for now, score. nowadays, it is uncommon if you watched a movie without. without no, no, but I'm saying for, for this era, this is not uncommon for, for a 1931. Yeah. Film. It, was, it was uncommon for me because I, I paid attention to it and I was like, yeah. man, they're doing all this without like I didn't even really notice it. Like after I got it out of my head and, you know, they're relying on the noises from Frankenstein's monster. They're relying on the lightning mm -hmm. and just dialogue and stuff like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and that's what makes, um, not to get off subject, but the movie The Black Cat, which came out shortly after this, which is the first teaming of Karloff and Lugosi, um, that movie has like almost wall to wall musical score, which is very unusual for the time. So kind of harkens back to that these movies had no score, essentially. So it, it was not uncommon, though, but you, you're, you're probably right. Just to get back to the just the general movie, um, I, I as I said, I, I like this movie a lot, but comparatively in the Frankenstein series, it's probably my third third favorite. Like compared to Bride and Son of Frankenstein, I mean this this is easily third for me, um, and that's not a knock on this movie at all. It's fantastic. It's it's the first one, and it's we wouldn't have the others without it. Um, but they took it even further to the next and, and uh, level one and two steps beyond this in the sequels. Um, we'll get to Bride in a minute, but that's, that's generally my consensus. I don't, I don't usually go back and rewatch this one all the time. 
despite how good it is. Let's move on. Oh, the mummy. Yeah, the let's mummy. Move on to the mummy. The mummy. Yes, nineteen thirty-two. This is an interesting one. Do you think? No. Uh, you 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 start <laughs> you off. To go? Yeah, yeah. This is this is the first one that they made without any kind of direct source material from you know classic literature, um, and they were kind of inspired by you know the discovery of King Tut's tomb. Um, the mummy is. I mean, it's kind of weird that it's it's very much different and yet the same as the others. So it has a lot of similarities to Dracula, not just casting, um, but story-wise, it's kind of the same premise. It's about an ancient monster who comes back to life, who's uh, seeking uh, a bride, who's the reincarnation of, you know, a long lost love, etc. And this movie is, is one that I've come to reappreciate though, um, as I gotten older. It's a very beautiful movie and it's almost like a love story more than anything else. That's why I don't really even think of it like a horror movie. It's much more romantic and kind of a love story more than anything else. I don't know how you feel. So this mummy 1932, I had not seen before. Oh, really? Yeah. So this was my first time watching that one. And because I told you I would always like rewatch Wolfman and Creature mm -hmm. stuff like that. So the Mummy was one I never watched. If I did watch a Mummy movie, it was the Brendan Fraser ones. Okay. So those are those fine, the ones, but you know those were the ones that I grew up because my mom loves those movies. So those are the ones I would always watch with my mom. So in preparation for this, I accidentally watched the 1959 one, mm. and then you corrected me and was like, "No, no, no, that's not." part of the universal, not a universal yeah and you said you you got to watch this one and i was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna rent it i'm gonna watch it sorry about that slap on the hand the 1951 one though i like oh it's so much I'm just so much throw, better so much better. i'm just gonna throw that out there i really like that one yeah, so maybe it. because i liked that one so much it tempered my view of this one because i hated this one <laughs> Really, this hate it. is my hate least it. favorite out of all the monster movies that I watched to prepare for this video. I wow. barely finished this movie. I and this is not even a long movie. It's like an hour and ten, yeah. hour and fifteen minutes. It's like so, minutes, and, yeah. and I was looking at my phone, like begging for the time to hurry up. I was so bored. I did not like this movie at all. Really, not, none of it. Not like I think the intro. The the intro is spectacular where they're in Egypt and they're actually digging up the mummy's tomb and uh, they read the scroll, the scroll of Toph and uh, the mummy slowly, you know, moves one arm and yeah, you know, no, I, I watched it. And I, that guy I, goes crazy, starts laughing ins insanely after uh, seeing the mummy come to life thing. He went for I, a little walk. I, man, I don't know. I just, I didn't like it. I don't, I don't, I don't blame I'll... you, honestly. Uh, it, again, like I mentioned, the first time I saw it, and certainly as a child, I did not did not go for this one at all. Thought it was super boring, and it's one of those ones that give it some time. You may, may maybe not anytime soon, but maybe in a couple years you would rewatch it and say, "Oh, maybe there is something a little bit more to it." For now, I'm gonna stick with the Brendan Fraser ones the Tom Cruise one and the 1959 one. Cause that was also the first time I watched the 1959 one. And I really liked that one. That is, so, that is I, an excellent, that's one of my favorite uh, hammer British horror uh, movies, the mummy, that one with uh, Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee, that, that mummy is spectacular. And I always think of the scene where um, the mummy bursts through the doors in the study, just comes literally just crashes through the door uh, and breaks. I like the part everything. when I don't want to get too off topic, but yeah. I like the part when, the the father is in like the padded room mm -hmm. and the mummy breaks into the padded room to kill him i like that part yeah no there, there's so many good scenes in that movie but to get back to this one i'm um, sorry that uh i didn't didn't care for this one at all but it is very slow it's uh even slower than dracula i think um and the mummy as a villain is he's kind of neither here nor there um, maybe it's part of it's because he doesn't actually, you know, kind of suit up as the mummy for any part of the movie other than the first scene. Um, he's just kind of, um, Karloff with like wrinkles as Ardeth Bay. Um, and I always loved the way he would say his name. I, I never could understand what it was. That's, um, 
Yeah, it's a tough sell. Um, it's definitely one that I've, it takes multiple viewings to appreciate. The Invisible Man would be next, 1933. This is, I think, top notch movie. Um, and this is one that it's like, you can consider it science fiction almost as much as you consider it horror. You can consider it horror uh, in my, in my book. Um, and I think part of the reason why this movie holds up as well as it does is that the special effects for 1933 are, I mean, they're outstanding. I, I mean, I still, I've watched documentaries about how they pulled it off and it's some complicated thing where they use different black felt to cover up different parts of the body and et cetera. But I mean, my God, it works really, really well. Um, and it still looks really good. Um, so I think the special effects are outstanding. The story is very tight. It moves very, very nicely along. Um, it doesn't, doesn't hold up. It doesn't slow down. Um, the monster is both, I mean, he's almost sort of, he's sympathetic a little bit, but his own kind of grandiosity and pomposity kind of ruins whatever semblance of, of um, you know, sympathy he had left behind. Um, and as he becomes more and more power hungry and mad, I think he becomes even more kind of likable and uh, enjoyable. And that a lot is because of Claude Rains, uh, who was unknown virtually at that time. Um, and to do a movie where you don't even get to see that the audience doesn't get to see your face, that that's not an ideal part, but his voice has such, you know, authority and um, charisma to it that he imbued, you know, life into that character. And uh, I never think of the invisible man other than having that voice. So I, I think this is a wonderful, wonderful movie. I, I love this one a lot. Yeah. Um, it, it's a good movie. It would probably be my second to the bottom of everything, yeah. oh. but I didn't hate it the way I hated the mummy. It's that's just a temperament on how good all the other ones are. So with that being said, he is the craziest out of all the monsters. He's the most like outrageous and, you know, luna he's a lunatic in this movie. And the visual effects, yes. I did a, my own video last night talking about the Universal Monster movies. And I spent a little bit of time talking about how I was just surprised that they were able to pull this off in that time period because it was it's still honestly kind of holds up for if you can remember when the movie oh, was yeah. made it it holds up it is really good I was like wow the thing that made me want to fast forward this movie so bad I did wait, wait, not do can, it can I guess is it yeah. the screaming lady <laughs> yes it was the screaming lady Una O'Connor Yes, she annoyed me so much. I wanted him to kill her. Honestly, I was like, if they if he kills her, then we don't have to hear her scream anymore. And but other than that, you know, the ending of him being in the snow and them trying to track him down in the snow is awesome. It's a good movie with one humongous annoying flaw. I will say and you won't you won't believe this, but after watching this movie so many times it does grow on you and you realize no, it how, will not grow on me it I, 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 my ear believe me believe me i i thought exactly the same thing and um i never thought i would be able to uh suffer through una o'connor's screams but after a certain point the absurdity of it just became too much and i just i started i started going with it it there's there's an inherent like farcical nature to the the movie um yes it's a little over the line with her but it, it i don't know I, I know it doesn't bother me anymore just like i laugh at all the stupid uh jokes like the um uh, some of the the policemen they're like they say really stupid things that are like seriously like he's all eaten away it's like that's what you're gonna say when you find an invisible man it's like and also just um i love the temper tantrums that he throws the, those are the best the, yeah the, the 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 monologues that come out of those i mean i included those on my when i did my top 10 um you know movie quotes video i included the invisible man the the, the power power to rule the world speech i mean i love that i can listen to that all day long 
Um, that and when he tells the people, you couldn't just leave me alone. Like that, that, that's one of my favorite scenes because she forgot the mustard, you know, it's all her fault. It's all her fault. Yep. 